today I want to talk about an affordable niche house that I've been a fan of for about a year now. And this house is called Kieran NYC. I first discovered them at Scent Explorer last year in December, and I'm actually going to attend again because it's, it's another virtual one. I was kind of hoping to be in person, um, and then I could see some of y'all maybe in person, which would be great, but it's not, it's virtual. Uh, tickets are on sale, I already bought mine, so if you're going, then I will virtually chat with you there. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I wanted to talk about this house because I really appreciate that they offer some really like high quality, great niche fragrances for an affordable price. I personally own three bottles from them. I have Sunday Brunch, which was the first one I picked up. I also have Nitro Noir. And then this one is actually a brand new release and it was sent to me for free by Mona. Uh, she is one of the founders of the brand. Uh, the other two I purchased, by the way. So just this one was free. This one is called Pier NY or New York. And uh, like I said, this is their brand new release. So I'm gonna talk about all three of these today. Um, but just so you know, these are all 50 milliliter bottles and these two I think I paid it was like $84 each for these um, occasionally you can get maybe uh, discounts they send those every once in a while if you sign up for the newsletter also if you buy the discovery set it comes with a voucher for I can't remember exactly what it is maybe $18 off a full-size bottle so uh, I think that's what I did with uh, this one here because I did originally buy the the discovery set and I'll be honest there's only one fragrance from this house that I don't really care for that's the Santal Sky every Everything else I enjoyed. 10 a.m. Flirt is kind of just a like for me. And Rose Ink is one that I really enjoy and it's one I've debated adding to my collection as well. But for now, I just have these three. Um, so I'm gonna talk about these today. The other ones, it's been so long since I sampled them that I feel like I can't really talk about very well from memory. But just so you know, the only one I don't really care for is Santal Sky. Um, and that's just, you know, personal preference. I think that um, a lot of people probably do like it. It's just not for me. So anyway, let's talk about these fragrances. So the first one I wanna talk about is Sunday Brunch. And this is the first one, like I said, that I purchased from the house. This one I got first after trying the Discovery set because it filled a hole in my collection. Um, it is a tea sort of fragrance. And as you may know, if you watch my videos a lot, I don't typically go for tea scents, but occasionally I find one that I do like, hence I have this one here. And so um, I decided to go with this first since I didn't really have anything like it. So um, Sunday Brunch, and I think the majority of fragrances up until this new one that was just released were created by Matthew Nardin. So both Sunday Brunch and uh, Nitro Noir were created by Matthew Nardin. But this one here, it's like a citrusy uh, sort of Earl Grey tea combo. I think there's both bergamot and lemon in here, but there is a tiny touch of white florals to it. I think it's jasmine that's supposed to be in here. Um, however, I will say this, it's really, really light. So if like me, you're not a fan of white florals, don't be like afraid of that because it's very light in this fragrance. It's just kind of a supporting player there, is not indolic at all, very sort of clean style of floral that's in this. Mostly what you get is this wonderful citrusy tea fragrance. Oh, I love it. And you know, like even though typically you think a citrusy tea would be primarily for summer, I actually can pull this off, I would say three seasons out of the year. I would not wear this in winter, at least here in Indiana where it gets very cold. Um, but like spring through fall, I can definitely wear this, especially during the daytime. I really like this. Um, I do think it's a great brunch fragrance, <laughs> if you will, even though it's in the name, but my God, I just really enjoy this. It's very uplifting, um, just really pleasant, easy to wear, and a great sort of like day-to-day -day scent that I think, you know, is not gonna offend anyone. I think most people will think you smell really good if you wear a Sunday brunch. The next one up is Nitro Noir. This is the second one that I purchased from the house. Uh, I was kind of at the time debating between this one and Rose Ink, and I decided to get this one first, mostly because it has Oris in it or iris, you know, um, and I really, really like oris slash iris. Um, so that's kind of what pushed me over the edge to get this one over rose ink, but I also like rose a lot and I really love that fragrance. So anyway, those were like two that were battling it out for what I was gonna get next, but I went with this one. And rose ink, it is sort of a little bit deeper fragrance than the Sunday Brunch. It's totally different uh, like places I would wear them. So Sunday Brunch, more like spring through fall, daytime, kind of everyday wear. 
Whereas Nitro Noir has a, a darkness to it. Um, it's not like the darkest fragrance ever, and it's not like the sexiest fragrance ever, but it is sexy and dark. It's like the right combination where it's not going to be like so far in one direction that you don't feel like it's not versatile at all. I do think it has some versatility. Um, but at the same time, I think I would mostly wear this in the evening. Now, I think the reason why this doesn't go too dark is because although there is orris and also patchouli in here that does give it some, some depth and darkness, there's also a bit of fruitiness from some sort of a berry kind of note in here, as well as a little bit of an uplifting like citrusy bergamot kind of thing in the opening. So yeah, it doesn't go too far in any one direction, but to me, this is a little bit more sultry. So I personally would prefer to wear it in the evening. Um, I think it's definitely unisex. It doesn't really go too far in either direction. Not super sweet, a little bit sweet, like the tiniest bit from those berries, but to me, not, not overly sweet or anything. I really, really like this. And I think this is another one that is pretty unique to my collection. I don't really have anything else that smells like this. Now the last one I wanna talk about is the newest release. And um, this one, here's the box by the way, I still have it since she just sent this to me recently. Um, I think that the packaging is always super cute. It's really fun. When you open it up, um, the inside always has like this bright red with this fun pattern here. I don't know, I just really like it. I find it enjoyable. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, these are like eco-friendly. So they do try to be like eco-friendly in terms of the sourcing of the materials as well as the packaging. They're also cruelty-free and vegan, I believe. Um, so if that's something that you're concerned about, these will meet those requirements. Um, but then on the back of the box, they do list the notes. So I can tell you specifically the notes in this one. Um, however, let me, before I tell you the notes, tell you what I get from it, because this one right away um, was very powerful, even though I wasn't expecting it to be, because as you can see, um, it's called Pier in Y, like, you know, a, a an ocean pier or a seaside pier, and it says salt on there. And so I was expecting it to be maybe sort of a lighter aquatic kind of fragrance, but that salt is not playing. <laughs> this is a very salty Ford fragrance. Um, and I will say the salt dies down after a few minutes, but man, that opening, I was like, holy salt. <laughs> um, I do quite like it. I find it really unique and interesting. Um, I would say that the closest thing I've tried to this maybe would be Womanity from Mugler, although I don't think that they really smelled that much alike. I think it's just that salty vibe with, there's there's also Fig in here, which I believe is in Womanity as well. I think that combo kind of makes it reminiscent of that one, but still it's it's different in many ways. So Pure NY was actually created by Jerome Epinette. Um, so I think, like I said, I think all the previous ones were created by Matthew Nardin. So they went with a new perfumer this time. And uh, here, like I said, are the notes. So it says it has salted fig, which yeah, tons of salt and fig. Um, there's bergamot, eucalyptus. I get a little bit of the, the eucalyptus in here. Violet and mimosa, as you know, I do not like mimosa. It doesn't stand out in here enough to put me off. I honestly don't really think I pick up the mimosa much at all, which is good because I hate it. <laughs> um, Tonka wood. Not sure like exactly what Tonka wood smells like. I know what Tonka bean smells like. I know what different styles of wood smell like. Tonka wood, not familiar with, but that's in here. There's also sage, which I can pick up a little bit. Seaweed, which I think continues to add to the saltiness a bit. Um, and that's it, yeah. So those are the notes that are listed in here for this one. I think this is great for daytime, summertime. I think it could go um, maybe spring or fall, but it does scream summertime to me because it does have that very oceanic salty quality to it. I do pick up a lot of the bergamot in the opening as well, which gives it sort of a zingy freshness to it. Um, and I think the story behind this is sort of like it's supposed to be where the like ocean meets the streets of New York, like a New York pier, obviously. Obviously. And I can definitely get that. It does have sort of like this edginess to it, but also, like I said, the very much like an ocean vibe to it. As the top notes kind of fade, I start to get more of the sage, which personally I really like sage. Um, and although this doesn't smell like wood sage and sea salt to me, it does have some reminiscence of that as well as Womanity. So both of those kind of remind me in some aspect of uh, Pure and Why. But then as the it kind of dries down more, that's when I get a little bit of maybe some florals, but mostly more of the woodiness. Um, and I just, I think it's a really great combination. Like I said, it's very unique. All three of these 
I don't really smell like anything else in my collection, which I really appreciate, but also I really appreciate the price point. So this one, I think they did go up in price a little bit with this new release. I believe it's $89 instead of 84 for 50 milliliters, but still for a niche brand that's just literally solely focusing on making fragrances, that is a pretty low price point for just like straight up retail pricing. And like I said, they do offer discounts every once in a while. So you can occasionally get it for less than that. Um, and that's what I really appreciate. It's like they're coming out with quality, unique fragrances, doesn't smell like, you know, everything out there. Um, the, like I said, this one does sort of remind me of a couple things, but it doesn't smell just like either of them. Um, but, you know, I think that that's really a great quality of this house. And um, if you've ever, seen the owner uh, or CEO Mona talk about her brand. I just, I absolutely love how passionate she is. So if you get a chance to like catch her on a live sometime, definitely um, check it out. She's very friendly. Also, if you ever have questions, like she will get back to you right away. You can message her on Instagram, like if you message through the brand or like email on the site. And she's like crazy friendly and really helpful. Um, and I really, really enjoy her personality. So that I think, puts me uh, a little bit more onto this house as well. It just makes me enjoy it even more because I like the people behind it. So anyway, those are the three that I have. Like I said, um, this new Pier and Y I think is great for summer days. Maybe could go a little bit into early fall, like when it's still warmer. Uh, I think Sunday brunch is great spring through fall for the daytime, especially like brunch, fantastic scent for that. Um, and then Nitro Noir would be more of an evening scent for me. Um, and like I said, it's not so heavy that I can't wear it in the summer, but I do think that I will be reaching for it more as we get into the fall. And I definitely reach for it more in the spring, in the evening. So love them all. I think it's a great house. If you haven't checked them out before, this is not sponsored at all. I wasn't even expected to do uh, anything in particular with this. I was just gifted uh, this bottle for you know, supporting the house previously and um, wanted to share my thoughts because I do really enjoy this house and I appreciate that there are, uh, well, at least this one, there are probably a couple others as well, but some niche houses out there that are really trying to be conscious about like not only um, the quality, but also the price point, the packaging, you know, being eco-friendly. I know several people who I'm friends with who are only using cruelty-free stuff as well. So I don't know, I just feel like this brand ticks a lot of boxes for many people. So if you haven't checked them out, go grab their sample set. I don't know what it costs now because now there are, are probably six fragrances in there, I believe, but when I purchased it, I think it was $18. So very reasonable for a, uh, like a discovery set. And like I said, you get the voucher with it too. So definitely worth a try. If you're interested in this house, um, I think they have some stuff worth smelling. Now I wanna hear from you all. Have you tried anything from Kieran NYC so far? And if so, what are your favorites? Are they the same as mine? Or maybe you like Santal Sky and I don't, and that's totally fine. Um, I know a lot of people do really like the 10 a.m. flirt. So that's another one maybe to be on your radar. Like I said, it was just kind of a like, not a love for me, whereas some of these other ones I really, really enjoy. Um, but a lot of people really like that one too. So you might want to check that out. Um, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and that you got something out of it. If so, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next.